Hey guys, Tyler with Independence Overland. So what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm gonna put some modern conveniences into my old Toyota. The reason for this is I did a poll on the channel because of all of the Tacoma, the Land Cruiser, the Ineos Grenadier videos that I've put out. What I found from a lot of you guys reading through the comments is a lot of people are just like, I can't afford this or it's a four cylinder, no thank you. So um, I did a poll on there and 93% of you are interested in keeping your old four wheel drive, your old Toyota, your old Jeep, whatever you have and basically modernizing it. And so I asked, would you guys like to see that kind of stuff? And you said yes. So I'm gonna do a whole series. There's gonna be several videos about this on the channel. In this one, we're putting a sway bar disconnect system onto the FJ. So the 2024 Land Cruiser, the 2024 Tacoma, and I guarantee the 2025 Forerunner will all have a disconnecting sway bar. That is confirmed. And so all of us with the older Toyotas were like, hey man, we would really like to have that. And just in time, Apex Design has launched this thing. I'm so excited about it. I've been waiting forever. I just wanna be clear that I did get a discount on this, but it's not because of the channel. It's because I know how to weld and I know how to install things and they're looking for test fitment. Basically to give them feedback on, hey, how was the installation process? How hard was that for you to do? And they really wanna feel out how this is gonna work. So you might be asking, why not just eliminate the sway bar? I did run without a sway bar for about a year, year and a half. And uh, what I found is I just did not like it. I didn't like the way the FJ handled. I live in the mountains, there's lots of curvy roads and it just was not satisfactory for me. And especially with the Alu cab setup, it is heavy. So I put the sway bar back on and now it feels great. I've tried the cheaper disconnect systems. I've tried extended sway bar end links and I've had bad experiences with both. You're gonna flip when you see how high of quality this thing is. It's just phenomenal. So let's dive into this. So let's do a quick overview of these kits. The Apex Designs disconnect system is being designed to work with various Toyotas that share the same front end components. And this should be the FJ Cruiser, the 5th Gen 4Runners, the 2nd and 3rd Gen Tacomas, and some GX models. But you'll have to wait until the official information comes out on their website. This kit does come with a stabilizing shock absorber for the sway bar. They attempted the kit without it, but they did find that it was needed and this cylinder will require being pumped up upon the completion of the installation. The sway bar end links themselves are a very unique design. These don't actually bolt to where the OEM links do. This kit actually bolts to the bottom of the upper control arm bolt where the ball joint is. And this isn't something that I realized before getting started. The forces of the sway bar are transferred to the burly locking mechanism and it appears to be more than enough to put up with those forces. These sway bar end links also have rubber bushings on each end to act as bump stops. This will eliminate noise and stop the mushrooming of metals when they're banging together when you have them disconnected. And last, the hardware kit is well thought out. It includes drill guides, threaded inserts, the crow's foot needed to torque the end links, and various other mounting pieces. When I see this kind of a thing come out for old Toyotas, we have to protect this company at all costs. They do recommend that you have this installed by a professional, and I look through the instructions and I understand why. It does require some drilling. It does require some welding onto your cross member. And um, all in all, I'm not really that intimidated by it, but I know a lot of people would be. So something to consider is you're gonna pay for the kit, and then you should, if you're not confident in your own installation skills, you should definitely pay somebody to do this for you. So let's see how the installation of the Apex Designs Sway Bar Disconnect System goes. So I just want to touch real quick that I didn't even think about that my King's remote reservoirs have a different sway bar kind of drop kit that also shifts the sway bar slightly forward. So uh, this is a prototype kit. So there may be different parts that come out in the future for this thing, or it may be altered or it may be the same. I'm not sure. I reached out to them, but it's a Saturday. So I doubt they're going to respond today. I'm just going to go ahead with the install, but I may run into some hiccups just so you guys know. Okay, so I took off my uh, sway bar bushings, which mine are polyurethane, which some people will recommend not to use. One of my patrons actually told me about how they built race car suspensions for a long time, and polyurethane bushings actually can cause more harm than good. I have planned on using rubber more on my next build than poly, but anyway, I do have aftermarket sway bar bushings as well, so I don't know how this system's gonna line up with my particular application. Hopefully it still works, I'm going ahead with the install. Okay, so I have drilled my holes in my sway bar. Uh, so this thing is ready to go. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to remove the driver's side 
uh, spacer here, this shim here, and uh, we're just gonna cut that off with a cutoff tool and a chisel, and as it shows in the instructions, but uh, we're gonna knock that off, and then I think we are on to the welding after that. But I think really the hardest part so far was just drilling that hole, because this is some hard steel. So this kit is pretty brilliant with its, uh, this came as one piece, and you break it off, and then you bolt that on, and it gives you a guide for where you're going to drill your holes. And then this is for drilling more holes for uh, remounting some stuff. So I do have to make some modifications to the sway bar mounting points because I have the king suspension, so that might affect this, I'm not entirely sure. But the other thing is that my Expedition 1 bumper, some of the mounts actually get in the way. I'm comfortable cutting some of that off. Uh, Expedition 1 would never tell you to do that. I've cut on that mount before to make room for my king's mounting. Uh, I had to kind of notch them. And so I'm going to uh, have to modify it a little bit more even to make all of this stuff fit, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. But either way, this is gonna require some more modification because I have all of these modifications. So keep that in mind. You might have to work on some stuff and kind of figure out some stuff outside of the instructions if you have a heavily modified vehicle. Okay, so next up is my rib nuts. I've painted where my holes are that I drilled into the frame rail for the new sway bar mount or mounting location. And so now I need to sink some rib nuts. So these tools can be finicky and if you've never used one, you can waste a few of the rib nuts. The rib nuts are super cheap if you can find them individually. I do recommend buying some extras of those or uh, maybe when you put your order and ask if you can buy a few extras or something like that just because uh, it's very easy to not get the right tension when you first set this up and you can mess one up and then uh, you'll be kind of sitting around until your new rib nuts come in and you can install those. So I painted the holes I drilled, now we're gonna install these, we're making progress. This is designed, and I just realized this, um, to actually go onto your upper control arm ball joint. So you have to trim it per the, the specifications in the manual. If your ball joint threads are too long, you need to trim it. I need to find out right now if upper control arms from Total Chaos use the same thread as Toyota, because if they don't, then this is gonna be a problem and this will not fit. So. I need to check that out. Okay, so I'm going to have to pick this up later because my upper control arm bolt is from Total Chaos, and this is a different thread pattern than what the factory is. So factory Toyota is a 14 millimeter 1.5 thread pitch, and the Total Chaos system is a 9 16 um, bolt. So that will not match up. I don't know if this is gonna end up being um, different pieces for different suspension kits. I don't know if I'm gonna have to find a different upper control arm ball joint, like the Icon conversion kit, or what I'm gonna have to do here. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. Hopefully the Icon greasable sealed system, which would be much better for my use anyway, because I have to change these ball joints here in Colorado all the time. So uh, I'm gonna have to look into that and see what I can do. So we're gonna have to pick this up a different weekend. Kind of bummed. I'm gonna have to put all the skid plates and stuff back on because I got a trip coming up. I was really hoping to use this. Okay guys, so it has been several weeks now. I finally sourced some bolts. I actually found these through a vendor that's a uh, hardware supplier on eBay. Local shops, at least in the mountain towns that I'm in, did not have this size bolt exactly because it's an M14 with a 1.5 pitch. And so like a fine thread. And that's just something Toyota uses. And so for my particular application, I have total chaos upper control arms and I needed a different bolt because the bolts they send with it are SAE. SAE will not work with these kits. These kits are designed for the OEM Toyota size. So if you have OEM upper control arms, it's fine. But if you have something like a total chaos, you're gonna need a bolt pack like this. I talked to the vendor on eBay and I told him about this video. So he has now listed two packs of these bolts and these are expensive. I'm wanting to say they're around $30. I just went ahead and got the only bolts I could find because Apex Designs is waiting on my installation for feedback before they release these. So the sooner I'm done with this, the sooner you guys can buy these kits. So I just put a strap here around my upper control arm to try to keep it in place. The shock should do most of the work, but that can definitely pivot out. 
So I'm just gonna loosen this up and then I know I'm gonna have to trim this bolt. So I gotta take some measurements real quick. The instructions have all this information and I will be taking all of this back off soon so I can rebuild these shocks. So the longest this bolt can stick out at the bottom is 0.9 inches. So I'm gonna have to cut mine. So I'm gonna trim it just a little bit shorter since 0.9 is the maximum. I did mark mine with a uh, paint marker, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with electrical tape too. And something else you can do for these, because it is common whenever you cut off something with a cutoff wheel, is you're gonna run into a situation where your threads might be messed up and it'll be hard to thread this onto the new uh, the sway bar end link. So I do recommend with these bolts that you find a nut for it at your local hardware store. That should be easier to find. So the idea behind the nut with stuff like this, whenever you cut it, is you put the nut on beforehand and then make your cut. And then when you back that nut back off, if there's any messed up threads, the, the nut will straighten them back out. So that's the only uh, reason for that. And I almost wanna say that it's a necessary part because you don't wanna mess up the machining on your new sway bar end links. So for the couple bucks, I might go ahead and just tell the guy to include those in the kit. As you can see here, I don't have a nut on the bolt, but I have extensive tools that I can fix this with. But I do highly recommend for you guys that are at home garage mechanics to buy those nuts. This thing should bolt right up now. Perfect. And honestly, I'm happy to put this back to a metric bolt anyway. I do not like it when aftermarket stuff takes a vehicle that's entirely metric and throws in some SAE stuff. I just don't understand that because I want my tool kit to match uh, everything I have. I don't want to have to add other things. Makes it easier to be prepared, especially on big sockets like this. Just I've never understood that. If you're installing one of these on an FJ Cruiser, don't pay attention to how I'm welding this here as they thought that these were the same as the Forerunner and it turns out it's not. So I was trying to match the photo in the original instructions. I actually did some cutting that I didn't need to do. So I ended up having to basically refabricate it and weld it back up. So don't pause this and use this as a template or anything like that. I am fully aware here that my welds look like hell but I did go back in off camera and I kind of boxed this up to make it fit right and to give it some more strength. So when you're finished with this part of the installation, they recommend you use a bike air pump to pump up the cylinder. I personally have a nitrogen tank for my shock, so I just chose to use nitrogen. Okay guys, so I finally completed this. I got the sway bar disconnect system installed. Again, I am one of the beta testers, so I had to do some more figuring out. I did make some mistakes, but that was part of the deal. So I had to weld some stuff up and kind of fix things that I'd messed up. But all in all, um, I did give feedback to Apex Design. So this kit will be a little more simplistic. So again, don't take this as a step-by-step for how this is all gonna go together. This basically took me three separate weekends. So some of the tips in this video, like the upper control arm bolts for something like the Total Chaos, uh, that will be a little bit of a time saver for some of you guys. This is not a very simple installation, though a lot of people who are good with DIY, they could do it if they have a good tool set, but um, this is not a beginner installation, that's for sure. Part of the reason Apex Designs gave me a discount is because they're going through this process and they're designing this and they know it like the back of their hand. So they needed outsiders to basically install this to see what was wrong in the instruction manual, what was wrong with the installation or uh, any input on certain parts and stuff like that. And I did have a lot of feedback for them. So uh, there's little things that I contributed to them, but it's not, it's not like a big deal. Like they have to make major changes or anything like that. This took me three separate days to get done, but I had to order parts and do different things. It slowed me down and I'm filming, so that slows me down. So I don't even have a guess of how long this took me in total to install. So you're gonna need a remote reservoir shock mount that's low profile. And I only found one. You need to be close to the factory setup of the sway bar as you can get. So this is dropping an eighth of an inch. The ones that came with the Kings, I think were like three quarters of an inch, half an inch, something like that. And Apex Designs did tell me, hey, you're gonna have to fix that because it was one of my questions. And so um, I did have to order those. So that's another hundred bucks. And those are from Overland Expedition Outfitters. These guys sent me one pretty quick uh, so I could do this whole installation. 
and yes it is mandatory that you're gonna have to get these if you have a remote reservoir so i did pay full price for these reservoir mounts i painted them up myself uh, i did have to modify mine and i'm gonna have to modify them a little bit more uh, just for the mounting of everything because i have bolts on the side of my expedition one bumper that go into the frame and so uh, i'm gonna have to change that up a little bit and kind of waller out these holes that i drilled but for now it's going to be fine i'll get into that later my whole purpose for putting this sway bar disconnect system on the fj is it's modernizing my old toyota and this is part of my series for modernizing an old toyota for you guys that can't necessarily afford one of the new toyotas you're excited about some of the stuff that they have to offer but you just can't afford it or you just don't want to deal with the new powertrains this is an option to kind of upgrade your old toyota and give it the features of some of the new trucks because like the tacomas now have a sway bar disconnect system the land cruiser has a sway bar disconnect system so now you can get something that's not electrical but it's far easier and far better built than any other option that we've had before this is such an obviously well engineered system uh, they went above and beyond with this and I really hope that uh, there's a lot of support from the Toyota community to get these on different vehicles because it is just super cool I know this isn't a massive suspension flex but this is what I have to work with right now All in all, I'm very satisfied with this system. I don't think anybody else could have engineered a better system for these. Obviously, it took Toyota even years to develop something like this. So to me, it's amazing there are some engineers out there that are building this kind of stuff. And uh, yes, it's expensive, but it is quality. I'm telling you, I've used the other sway bar disconnect systems and they are not good. This is developed in a way where I have way more confidence in it. Very unique system. I will leave links below. I don't know what the final cost is. I don't get any kickback for referring these products. Products. I just thought it'd be cool to modernize the old Toyota to give it something that the modern Toyotas are going to be coming with because that sway bar disconnect system is pretty sweet from my perspective again because I'm carrying so much weight and I want to have uh, the ability to pull those off and the other thing I got to add is how easy it is to pull these off and to put them back on compared to the other systems I've used I mean it is night and day it is so easy there's no fighting or fussing with it you don't have to be on even ground to do it you can just slap that thing in there pin it and you know it's not going anywhere so I'm very satisfied with this system there's other videos that will be coming out from other content creators and you can go and check out more of this stuff and uh, you'll see this in action in upcoming videos so like and subscribe if you want to see some of that and i will have some other videos that will be coming out they might be out before this might be out after but i've got a break upgrade for uh, the old toyota stuff overall i'm just trying to do a series of upgrades to an old Toyota to modernize it and make it kind of have some of those features that the new Toyotas, the $60,000 Toyotas, which is just so crazy to say, but uh, it'll give your old Toyota some of the features of those expensive models. So anyway, um, that's what I have on the Apex designs. Go and check these things out. I think that it is a phenomenal solution. And now after all of my testing and uh, helping these guys, I can finally put my skid plates back on and we're going into spring, even though it doesn't look like it. We are three weeks from spring. So very excited to get back out on the trail and use these systems some more. So thank you guys so much for watching and until next time. As always, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road and overland related content.